All right. This is what the court, are you employed? I'm working on that. All right. So how do you support yourself? My daughters. All right. Who do you live with? My daughter. All right. You're going to have to get a job. Yes, I know. I'll you know, honestly, children are not supposed to support parents. I know that. All right. And how do you know Mr. Escobar? He is actually a friend of my boyfriend. All right. And how old are you? 37. And how old are you? 50. All right. It's okay to be a cougar. This is not, a, I mean, there's no problem with that. I'm just asking. All right. There's, there's to be three years of deferred adjudication. Like uh, a $400 fine. That's, I'm telling you, men do it all the time. That's my man. Oh, that's your, your man in, in the box? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Will you hand me my screen box? Let's call the case of Six Trails versus Carrie Caro. Good morning. Oh, there she is. Okay, good morning. Um, let me make sure I got my... Uh, all right. And what's the claim of on this case, Mr. Kraft? Your Honor, there's rent to retain possession in the amount of $4,000. $269 plus $200 in costs for a total of $4,469. All right. And ma'am, how are you intending on getting this done? I actually already turned my keys in, but I need some type of paper to say why I'm owing this kind of money. They, they, like, I heard the case before me, and these people are so unprofessional. Like, they never... I've never received anything from them, even telling me what I owe. All I know is that I was told I had to leave by December 31st or I would go to court. Then I receive a, a notice to quit the night before I'm given court papers. They have not given me any paperwork showing why they're saying I owe this money or how much I owe. Like this, I've yeah. already given these. I'm done oh. with them. This is, I don't know. This is crazy. Hold on a okay, just hold on a second. Take a deep breath for a minute. First thing is, is that they have, this is a possession only case. Yeah. So it, okay. So you're indicating you moved? I gave them their keys on Wednesday and I recorded it in case there was an hold, issue. Hold on. Okay. Okay, ma'am. I, I wasn't there. I'm just asking questions. Uh, my frustration so, is not with you, Judge. I'm, these people are very frustrated. Okay. I get it. I get that. I'm just, but I, for me to understand, I just need you to answer my questions. Okay. okay. So you gave them, you said you gave them the keys on the third? Yes. Do you have any indication of that? I do not, Your Honor. I knew that okay. was good. Okay, but he doesn't, ma'am, he doesn't have it. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. I'm just saying the attorney doesn't have it. So, yeah. um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is, go ahead. I was just trying not to have to come back to court. <laughs> so I, I made sure I, it was I know. I know. I feel that way sometimes myself. So yeah. here, here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, defendant says surrendered premises January 3rd, 2024. Okay. This is a possession case. So here's what I'm going to do, ma'am. I don't want you having to come back either, but I'm going to adjourn this out one week to the 12th, 2024 at what time is that? 10? Yes. At 10 a.m. Let them, let the attorney check in with them as to whether or not you surrendered your keys. And if you surrendered your keys, then this case is done. It's really as simple as that. So you may have to come back into court on that date just 
to make sure for yourself that's done. If if it's not, if they're saying you didn't turn in your keys, just so that you know, I may have to send it for a hearing that you surrendered to premises. But it sounds to me like you did. That paperwork and everything else just has to catch up with the attorney so they can tell me that and try to get rid of the case. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but can we do Zoom? Because it's, you know, I don't live near there and it's... I've done what I know you to can do. you can zoom in okay just like you did today okay, okay. thank you thank judge you. I have a great day right. you do the same bye Hi. good morning happy new year so I have some questions for you about the Bear County Jail yes so I received a text message from someone and they showed me a sticky pad filled with roaches. So is the state of the Bear County Jail in that much disrepair? They showed me ceiling tiles are down. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. And you're a magistrate, right? Correct. How's the magistrate area? Is there any leaks? No leaks? Okay. It's cold. Ah. Why did I have it cold? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'll let everybody know. <laughs> Who's here on Annette and Draga? Come forward, please. Court is calling 2023 CR 7274, State of Texas versus Annette Idrago. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Gearhead, Your Honor. Defense. Good morning, Your Honor. Daniel De La Garza for the defendant. And are you Annette Drago? Yes, ma'am. You entered a plea of guilty on November 16th. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at nine years in the prison. There's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon, and the state is silent on your application for deferred adjudication. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report, State? Yes, Your Honor, we're reviewing it right now, but since you're silent, I'm, I'm fine with reviewing it then. Go on. All right. Uh, defense? I have reviewed it, Your Honor, and showed the same to my client. All right. Any objections to the PSI report, Defense? No, Your Honor. All right. All right. The State is silent. Uh, defense, do you have any witnesses? We don't have any witnesses, Your Honor. I would just like to point out that Missy Drogo's husband is in the courtroom. Okay. His father is also in the courtroom. He's standing. She has a supportive family, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I don't think the testimony is necessary. I can argue it, and it's in the PSI. Okay. But, so we have no witnesses. All right. Well, if you want to address with your client, because there's where it says guilt knowledge, there's an X there, which I'm assuming guilt is acknowledge but there is also an x that says guilt is minimized and i could ask you some questions you? sure can you raise your right hand for me please yes. do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you god yes ma'am. all right you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record please and garcia Hidalgo. all right make sure you keep your voice up so that the court reporter can hear all right okay. all right defense thank you your honor and you know you're here for sentencing today, right? Yes. And you pleaded guilty to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Yes, sir. Right? Now, tell the judge at the time, and it's in the PSI, we talked about it, but right. tell the judge at the time that this was happening, what was going through your mind? Um, Self-defense, Your Honor. I was the, simply trying to defend myself. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. And then now, since I've become your lawyer, you've looked at the evidence and all that kind of yes. stuff, have you realized now, do you know whether it was self-defense or not? Yes. And do you think that it was not, or do you think it was self-defense? I believe in my heart it was self-defense. Now, do you take responsibility for what happened, though? I do know now that it's, you know, in my mind, in my heart, it's self-defense. But you know now that but it was... I know. Yes, sir. Tell the judge that it was I what? do know now. All right, so I'm sorry. If yeah, you all I mean, can yeah. slow down and one at a time. So tell the judge whether you think now this was self-defense or whether this was illegal. Um... I know now it is illegal, but at the time I was it was self defense. All right. So then the the question is: Do you take responsibility and do you acknowledge the guilt um, for the aggravated assault with yes, a deadly sir. weapon case? Hold on, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon case. Do you acknowledge your guilt? Yes, sir. And what are you asking the judge to do today? If I 
would please get um, probation. This is my first offense. I simply was scared for my life, trying to defend myself. You keep saying that, but I find that very, very hard to believe. And tell the, tell the court, why should the judge put you on probation? Um, like I said, this, I know now if this would never happen again. First off, right? Right. Do you have a criminal history? No, sir, I don't. A, a, maybe a very limited one from Hidalgo County? Um, like a harassment or something no, that's on the piece? All right, everyone, one at a time. Okay, <laughs> go for it. Okay, and if you're granted probation, do you know that there's terms and conditions that come along with it? Yes, sir, I do. Are you going to follow all those terms and conditions? I'm willing to comply all the way. Are you going to use drugs while you're on probation? No, sir, and I don't use drugs. You never. You don't have a history of drug no, use, sir. right? Are you going to work? Yes, sir. And I'm the working. PSI says that you're a caregiver, right? Yes, sir. Are you able to go back to some kind of job like that? Yes. Sir. Now, what if the judge says you're not able to work as a home care provider or, or anything like that? Are you able to find other kind of employment? Yes, whatever is suitable for me. Where would you go live? Uh, my parents at the time being. And do they live do they, do they live in close proximity to Ms. Hernandez, Ms. Tracy Hernandez? No. If the court orders you to stay away from the complainant in the case, would you stay away from her or would you go back to the goodwill and no i have no business anymore. is there anything else that you'd like to tell the court before before we, we stop just before? that i'm truly deeply sorry and i know now that all i was trying to do was defend myself it was simply self-defense i'm a mother of five kids and i'd like to go back to see my kids I didn't see him for Christmas, Thanksgiving, or New Year's. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, any questions? All right, I do. I'm, the police report says that you were chasing her with a knife. No, ma'am. And they say that there's a video of you chasing her with a knife. No, ma'am, I did not chase her with a knife. I, I was simply scared running because there was two women after me. Not only one, two all right. Am I? Well, Judge, you know, I I don't know really what to make of this because lots of times we can say, well, the person has a mental a mental illness, health you know issues. They're on drugs. I, I don't know really what to make of this other than it's a one time kind of incident thing. Where's it's, the video? It's it's in the discovery. Any objection to the court seeing the video? Does, it's, if it's if you all have it, if I could see the video. Thanks for the time. Sure. Because she's saying self-defense, well, and, and I, I'm being told that the video, there's think, a video that shows something differently. Yes, Your Honor, but I think now she realizes it's definitely not self-defense. This okay. is not a self-defense. All right. So what I, I, what I want to know is whether or not she was chasing somebody with a knife or not. Um, probably I was scared, ma'am. No, you said you you said you were running from two women. Yes, there were two women after me, ma'am. But and the police report says that you were chasing the complainant with a knife. So were you chasing the complainant with a knife or no? Yes. To defend myself and run from <clears throat> there was two women to defend. If somebody's running away from you and you're chasing them with a knife, how are you defending yourself? No, th there were two women, and one of them were after me. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll see the video. See what the video shows. All right. Judge, and just to protect the record, if I could, I'm just going to say because the court's requesting it because since they're silent, you know, so it doesn't look like they're like they're like sure not. Uh, the court had requested a video, and for the state, Dan, you ask for the state of Texas. All right, and defense. Uh, this video was actually mentioned in the stipulations to the court. Uh, defense, are you offering the video? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so this will be marked as defense exhibit number one. And the court will view the video. And I'm being told that the incident occurs at the halfway mark. Well, All right. Counsel, any objection to the court fast forwarding? No, Your Honor.
And who is your client, counsel? Believe the lady with the hat. Right. Um, Let me pause it. Mr. Drago? Yes, ma'am. What are you wearing in this video? Um, are you the person in the black shorts? No, ma'am. Are you the person with the burgundy top? Mm. With the blondish hair? No, ma'am. Are you the person in the gray shirt with blue jeans? With the white hat? I think so, yes. And who is the person next to you? Uh, the other lady. There okay. were two ladies who, who approached me. I'm not sure. No, it wasn't. It was, okay. So are you saying you're the person with the white hat, with the check and the gray top and blue jeans with the white shoes? Um, I believe so, Your Honor. Not sure. I can't really see. And it'll start becoming like a scuffle. Okay. Uh, not mainly. So I'll make sure you speak up because oh, the still. court reporter, we're still on the record. Just one second. Say she swung it.
All right. All right. Uh, any questions from the state? Yes. All right, defense. Just a real brief argument, Your Honor. Okay. What we're asking you to grant Ms. Idrogo's application for deferred adjudication. You saw the video, Your Honor, in her mind. It was self-defense. I certainly understand the chase and all that kind of stuff. And, and she now understands how it is not self-defense. Nonetheless, Judge, she definitely takes responsibility for her actions. <laughs> he is so full of baloney. She's asking to be supervised by the court. I think she would benefit from some anger management um, and classes that help her deal with these kinds of situations and how to get herself out of these kinds of situations. So um, the long story short is, Your Honor, based upon her limited criminal history, her lack of drug use, the fact that she um, takes responsibility, we ask that you grant the application. Thank you. Uh, anything else you wish to say, Ms. Udraga? I just ask that God may touch your heart and understand that you like the um, I'm, all I was asking was that if the Lord could hear me right now, he'd understand how much I repent of what happened that day. <laughs> but it simply is just a self defense in my mind, even though I know it's wrong. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So this is what the court is going to do. The court has heard all the evidence. And I want you to know that I internalize everything. And I look at cases on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. The court is going to deny your application. Court will find you guilty. Court will sentence you to uh, three years in the prison give you credit for any time served, take in consideration NIMAC number 714-465, NIMAC number 723-973. There's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. Maybe excuse sir. Yes. Thank you. Court is calling 2022 CR 3597 State of Texas versus Chardonnay Leanne Lockhart. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Again, you ask for the state of Texas. Defense. Uh, Mark Darwin for the defendant. And are you Miss Lockhart? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Chardonnay Leanne Lockhart who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 3597? For the offense of attempted arson reckless causing damage on May 15, 2023, for a period of two years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Violate condition number four in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Chardonnay, Leanne Lockhart, did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of August and September 2023 in violation of condition number four. How do you please to that? True or not true? True. Uh, Your Honor, the state waives all the violations. Any objection? Uh, no objection, Your Honor. Is there a proposed agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The proposed agreement is for 272 days in the Bear County Jail and for this to satisfy the judgment since it's a Class A misdemeanor. All right. Has she done anything on probation? No, Your Honor. All right. Then why would... Well, all right. So you've done nothing on probation. Probation, what are you requesting? After she was here last in court, um, she was denied show up anymore so we were I, we understand that there may have been or maybe some issues as far as may possibly homelessness and so forth and we were going to ask just to amend for a moral recognition therapy job skills training and possibly um the re-entry center for services all right and will this be set up while she's in custody if i follow this we can't set up those things in custody, Judge. All right. All right. At the time, at the time Judge, just to also, I know you have your um, 
docket sheet. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she was evaluated for DDRF. However, we could not do DDRF because at the time she was pregnant. Um, don't know what the what the um, status is of that is at this particular moment, but we just don't have enough to go off of to give any other recommendation, Judge. Ms. Lockhart, what's the status of the pregnancy? I'm not pregnant any further. Okay. Judge, she... I mean, um, how do you mean? Okay. All right. So here's my issue. I don't know if anybody wants to ask any more questions, but I'm not going to give her 272 days in the Bear County Jail. If she wants to be revoked, she can be revoked. I'll give her 365 days at the Bear County Jail, or she can, um, or I will follow the probation's recommendation. You understand? You do you agree? Um, Judge, it's uh, Ms. Lockhart's wish that you you do um, send her to 365 days in the Bear County Jail after revocation versus, um, you know, the alternative. Uh, she doesn't wish to. Right, it would be a four thousand dollar fine, and time and money is not going to run concurrent. Well, no. Um, uh, because let me, let me just tell you, Mr. Lockhart. Here's what the problem is. The problem is here is that you are on deferred for an attempted arson. You're homeless. You have no job. You've been staying from hotel to hotel. You're going to end up potentially. If I just send you out in the world, you're going to end up getting another theft case or something else is going to end up going wrong with your life if you don't get stable. The only thing that I can do other than continue on probation is maxing you out. And the reason why I would max you out is because you have done nothing. And the reason why I will not run uh, time and money concurrent is because you have done nothing. So the choice is yours. I pay them. Well, then you can choose the uh, max maximum sentence of three sixty five. Tell the judge. Yeah, I'll tell the judge. Yes. What would you like to do? Okay, I would like to do the three sixty five and pay the four thousand dollar fine. All right. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yeah. Um, you want to talk to her about that? Um, well, well, I did, and I filed the trial court certification along with the explanation um, uh, before she signed it. Um, so, as I told you, you're not going to be able to appeal your decision to enter a plea of truth. Um, so, uh, you, you effectively waived it by uh, tendering that document. Well, Ms. Ms. Lockhart, you're not going to have a right to appeal. If you want the court to sentence you to the 365 days with a $4,000 fine, time and money not run concurrent, are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am. All right. Court will uh, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you to 365 days in the Bear County Jail, give you credit for any time served. There's a $4,000 fine. Time and money is not to run concurrent. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Where are we on this case? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, oh, and I'm sorry, defense. You're on this side. Oh, uh, rest the area. Things have changed in the new year. Okay. So defense is on the side. Yes. Good. To yes, Judge. Uh, um, we're here in Mr. Hawkins' matter. Um, he's currently, uh, this is the individual I brought to the court's attention. He was yes. in Laurel Ridge. Um, he recently got out, and he's starting VA uh, intensive outpatient this upcoming Thursday. Um, I've been speaking with the states, and um, they're realizing that uh, the treatment would be good for him, that if he kind of does the treatment, follows the program, uh, they may be entertaining a possible PTD offer um, to mirror some of the treatment that he's going to be getting with the VA judge. So uh, we're just requesting just uh, a short reset um, so that this, the state can reach out to the complaining witness, the officer in this case, and make sure that, you know, he's okay with it. And to also see his progress about getting counseling. He's going to be doing uh, 
three times a week, three hours group. And then after that, he's going to be doing uh, nine weeks of individualized sessions with the VA. So I spoke to his case manager and verified all that. And he'll be getting to be started up this Thursday with that with that counseling. All right. So is there going to be any motions filed for competency or sanity or anything of that nature? I would like to get a second opinion. A second opinion for what? For mental uh, for mental ability. Well, Judge, she's going to be seeing a psychiatrist this Thursday. I don't believe I should have had been forced to take that medication. Okay. All right. Now see where we are. So here's the thing. I'm not a medical doctor, and you need to talk to your medical doctor about medication if you have any concerns over it. I sometimes would have... I don't understand how the officer was allowed to put me in handcuffs and place me in back of a police car for not taking medication. She can't can't get into that because it's the facts of the case, so we can't talk about that. So your attorney is right. With regards to the facts of your case, that's something that will be brought out to the court if there's a jury trial or if there's a specific motion for the court to hear. You understand? Yes. All right. So... Is there going to be any competency evaluation file or are we going the route of Veterans Treatment Court or the route of PTD? I believe at this point, Judge, she's going to see the, the psychiatrist, the, medic, the, the doctor at the VA on Thursday. So uh, depending on what he states, I may follow the competency issue or insanity issue. But uh, I did get notice that he's going to be meeting with the doctor this Thursday. Okay. So I think we'll be able to, to know more or less what the, those doctor's findings were and where we're at. All right, so that's happening this Thursday? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Ferguson, can you put this the last week in January? Your Honor, is yes. it possible to have a doctor evaluate me that's board licensed by any state other than Texas? You'll have to speak to your attorney. Yes. So I'm not in charge of giving a doctor to you. That's something your attorney will have to request. Do you understand? Okay. All right. So which date? The 29th, Judge. All right. So we're going to be coming back on uh, January 29th. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Hawkins, I appreciate you asking these questions. I always want people to appear before me. If you have a question about something, just ask it. If it's something that I can't answer for you, I'll let you know. All right? Yeah, it's it's just I've been lied to a lot of times to Texas police officers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just would like my... I'm in court. All right. So what will end up happening is your attorney, the complainant in this case, your attorney will be able to speak with them and uh, the state's attorney will be able to speak to them as well. And we'll go from there. But in this court, there's a process to everything. So I will make sure that you're ready to proceed before we start uh, with witnesses and that type of thing. Okay. All right. So we'll come back on January 29th. Is sure. there anything else? Nothing further from defense. Judge. All right. Thank you. All right. Court is calling 2023 CR 8580 state of Texas versus Jennifer Rhonda Mara. Can I have parties announced for the record? Can I have, staff, please? Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Uh, Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. William Davidson for Jennifer Mora. And are you Jennifer Mora? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with all offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram to four grams. That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of eight years and there'll be 100 hours of community service, restitution, and a tap evaluation. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State, any evidence? State all for state civil one and all attachments. Any objections? No objection, no. All right, you may continue to confer. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you have applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, sir. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, my client tells me she's not going to have anything else to do with drugs and that she's going to do everything this court tells her to do. And she has sat here all morning and seen you, saw you sentencing people um, well on deferred. All right. So uh, what is happening with this case that's out of Fayette County? Um, Fayette County 
was uh, when this case happened, they had arrested me for the Fayette County warrant. Um, I was pulled. I was pulled over, and I was put on. I uh, was put on probation in Fayette County for eight years, and I just switched it over here. This happened whenever I was arrested during the Fayette County warrant. Um, I more or less they gave me a ticket, and I didn't know if that was what was going on with that. I moved uh, to Chicago. I came back, and I had a warrant. I had I had no idea. And then so you uh, don't know what's happening with Fayette County. Oh no, I'm on I'm on probation with Fayette County. Oh, counsel, do you want to have a seat? Through, uh, through. Again, if you need me to, Jeff. All right, thank you. I'm on probation with Fayette County through here. I have uh, uh my officer um, what's her name? Louis Louise Louis. So what's happening with that case? I'm on, Does she I'm have on a probation for that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm good. I'm I'm good. She's gonna actually my probation officer for now is gonna be my probation officer for here too. They're gonna put it together. All right. Do you have any children? I do. I have grandchildren too. All right. What are your children's ages? Um, twenty six and twenty nine. All right. Uh, why why the tears? I don't understand. Yes, I want to take this somber for my grandbabies. No, I mean you need to do it for yourself. Well, because yeah. how old are your grandchildren? My grandchildren are one and six months. All right. So, I mean, you have to do it for yourself. When's the last time you've seen your grandchildren? Christmas. <laughs> if you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? And before you even say, you're going to get drug tested today. So just be honest with me. And they should be negative. <laughs> All right. What do you mean should be? They're not going to be negative. When's the last time you used? Uh, it's been a while. <sighs> What's a while? Uh, marijuana wise, probably about, I smoked probably about a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was very little. And besides that, I should be okay. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's out in 30 days. So are you employed? Uh, yes. What do you do? Um, I'm, I'm doing punch out and clean up for a construction company, CNF construction. All right. Any questions? No, you yeah. Okay, this is what the court is going to do. It's going to be eight years deferred adjudication, $250 fine. That will be probated. I'm going to want a TAP evaluation, uh, follow TAP results. I'm sorry, recommendation. If they're asking for inpatient treatment, we're going to start with intensive outpatient treatment. If they're asking for outpatient treatment, we're still going to start with intensive outpatient treatment. 100 hours of community service restitution, proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. I'm going to order parenting classes. Once she completes the parenting classes and the 100 hours of community service restitution will be deemed satisfied. I'm assuming you want, yes. Uh, about the parenting classes and no unsu uh, unsupervised visits with minors. I watch my grandbaby on Mondays and, and Tuesdays. I have to or my daughter can't work. I can't have you watching children until your life is in order and I deem that it's in order. Well, these are my grandchildren. I understand that. Let me ask you something. Do you love your grandchildren? Of course I love my grandchildren. A lot? My daughter has but to wait, let me ask you this. Do you love your grandchildren? Yes. Do you love them a lot? Yes. All right. So, would you just let anybody take care of them? No, I'm the only venue she well, no, has no, no. right now. My question is, would you just let anybody take care of them? Of course not. All right. So, let's say I come to your house and you want me to take care of your grandchildren because something came up, you can't do it and your grandchildren love me, I got great references, right? And you watch me, you have cameras, you say, Stephanie, we want you. And I say, great. And then I tell you, there's something I didn't tell you. Uh, I was out with a fugitive task force and they came to a hotel and arrested me and there was meth everywhere. Well, my daughter understands this. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. Sometimes family members understand things and I don't know why people do this with children. With children, people don't plan to have children. They have no idea, okay, I need daycare because I got to work or either I'm not going to work. So how am I going to support my children? 
And guess what they end up doing? They end up getting whoever they can get to babysit their children. They're like, oh, it's a relative. I know she's used mm -hmm. drugs in the past. I know it was meth. I know it was marijuana. I know she's on probation for that. I know a fugitive task force just picked her up. But the answer is no, I can't have that. Because you know what? I guarantee you, God forbid something happens to your grandchildren while they're in your care. And you know what the first question is going to be asked? Well, who, what judge would allow her, not even done treatment, to babysit a one-year-old and a six-month-old? And I know how one-year-olds and six-month-olds are. I have a niece who's two. I love her. They're she is so them. demanding. But the answer is no. Those are my rules. All right, parenting classes. Once you started on parenting classes, once you started your treatment, then the court will reconsider. But for now, there's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. If you have unsupervised contact with minors, what's going to end up happening is a motion to revoke is going to be filed. And you're looking at 10 years in the prison. There's going to be field visit, random, one time per month. What? There is to be random UAs or either a patch, regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Uh, probation, is there anything else you need? No, Your Honor. All right, anything else you need from the court? No. All right, I guess, and we can go off the record. I know you think I'm being harsh, I'm not listening, but I am listening. It's just the grand but, grand thing. Yeah, but part of my job is to protect the community. And sometimes people don't consider children part of the community. Many times people consider children as property. Like I tell them what to do and that's what they need to do. But a one-year-old and a six-month-old can't take care of themselves. You can't just put them at Travis Park and say, I've had you, good luck to you. And for some reason, I don't know what's wrong with people. They do not put children first. That it, it's just sort of like a handbag or something. Yeah. Uh, let me dress this child up. Look, they're so pretty. And then they're on their own. Mm. But what I can tell you is when I would have clients that I've represented on CPS sites, moms who had drug issues, I would always tell them, this is where you are at the point in your life now. We're trying to get you better and get you over this so you can get your children back. So where you are at the point in your life is the fugitive task force had to go pick you up at a hotel. And when they go to the hotel, there's meth and everything. That's a problem, right? That is so the problem then. Yeah. So you have to prove to me that you okay. should be in the children's lives unsupervised. If you can prove that to me, I'll allow it to happen. All right. Thank you. All right. So when you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? And you're getting drug tested today. Negative for sure. I'm not worried about it. All right. It. All right. Well, we're going to do a drug test today and then we'll come back. She already did it. Oh, she did? What were the results of the drug test? She just stepped out. All right, just give us a moment. Just right. have a seat and we'll okay. come back. All right, so here's your problem. You're not complying with UAs. Do you understand? Yes. All right, so you're on deferred adjudication. If you don't comply with your UAs and I receive a report, you're looking at potentially going to prison for 10 years. Do you understand? Yes, I do. So you had better start complying with your UAs. If you do not, a motion to revoke is going to be filed. We're not going to have this conversation again about excuses as to why you won't do your UAs. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And with parenting classes, probation, do you have any objection to the court approving the parenting classes that he took? No, Judge. All right, so I'll approve parenting classes, and you're going to do random monthly UAs. Do you understand? Yes, Or either you can do the patch. So it'll be random monthly UAs or the patch. Is there anything else you need from the court? No. All right, thank you. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today? This is, this is a joke. This is a joke. The day is a joke. We need an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself sometimes. Oh my God, sir, put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of this. this what is wrong with everybody today? You know what, Miss Green, we're going to start bringing people in person. People are going to learn how to act as corporate. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Ma'am? Ma'am? Can you hear it? No, I know. Don't give up. Okay. 
ahead. The milk, the milk tastes bad. But trust me, at the end of the day, I'm sitting up here, I'm the one that needs to drink.